Here we go. John chapter 12, uh, verse 31. Jesus is talking. Stuff happened when Jesus walked the earth, man. The voice from heaven spoke. And um, every time the voice spoke from heaven, or even every time Jesus prayed in public, it was really a, a sign for the people. In fact, that's what Jesus said. He said, this voice not, came not because of me, but came for your sakes. So the voice from heaven said, I have glorified the name verse 28 let's go John 12 28 father glorify thy name we're singing about it we're talking about it then came a voice from heaven saying I both glorified it and we'll, I glorified it again he probably said it differently but did it I'll do it again people heard it and they were like whoa that voice thundered an angel just spoke to him and Jesus said it didn't come because of me I didn't need to hear a voice from heaven. You did. And this is what he says after this. Powerful. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out cast out turn to 1st John chapter 1 I'm sorry chapter 3 verse number 8 he that committed sin is of the devil he's the, he's the author of sin that guy He's, he, he created it. He, 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 uh, he started it. That's why he said, for, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus said, the hour has come that this prince of this world that knucklehead's going to get cast out. Judgment. John wrote and he said that's why Jesus came was to destroy what the devil started in this world. It's done. It's cast out now. That's why Jesus came. In the New Testament, in this name, in this power, in this authority, the purpose, the, the cause of Calvary, the reason for his coming, they cast out Sickness. They cast out demons. They cast out the darkness. Chains of religion and false understandings and sin. Even demonic oppression or even demonic possession was cast out. The hour has come, church. For God glorified His name already, but He's going to do it again. I didn't get through yet, so I'm going to preach a while on that, I suppose. But let me say it like this. What he has done before to glorify his name, he'll do it again today. And his name will be glorified. And the purpose of that glorification is to cast out the works of the devil, the stuff that Satan has been doing, the things that, the evil that has been set up in your life and the lives around you. It is now that judgment will come again and the name of Jesus will be glorified. Jesus said it's going to be cast out. Cast out. I was looking up that word. Another way of saying it is to be banished from a family. I want to preach about the banishment of hell. The banishment of hell. Let's banish the hell in our lives. Amen. Let's banish it. Banish it out. By the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. We can banish the things of hell. 
Hallelujah. Put your Bibles down. Lift your hands, your voices with me one more time in prayer. Jesus, let the Holy Ghost and the Word of God and the anointing therein, oh God, be released in our midst and let chains and shackles and sickness and anything that Satan has done in these precious people's lives be broken, be removed, and be banished in the name of Jesus so that your name will be glorified again. Amen. Amen. You, you may be seated. Woo! I have a Bible study that I'm just going to yell at you. That's what preaching is. You preach louder the Bible studies that you have discovered. The Word of God is so powerful. The Word of God has enough power in it without anybody shouting it to you. Without any, sometimes I think we have doubt in us and we get scared. And so we have to act stronger and be more... You know, uh, I'm more anointed if I get freaked out and run and shout. I don't think Jesus did any shouting too much when he preached. I think he just said, Satan, come out. Come out. Yeah. Yeah. He, he preached with authority and they, they knew it. And, um, but he, he did something. The Lord did something. He came with a purpose. He came as a partaker of what we have, flesh and blood. He came and partook of the same so that he could deal with the works of the devil he took the bully out he bullied the bully he took him out but he took him out he came and it, it is great job said that that the entrance to the world is through the womb of a woman you can't come into this world any other way and so satan when he possesses a man he gets inside of a body he is there illegally he enters the world without the right of passage. He's illegal. And so the process was not done correctly. And so what do you do with a thief or somebody that has broken the law? The only law that a thief knows is the enforced law. The only law obeyed is the law that is enforced upon them. And so the authority, they would wear the badge and have the gun and the tasers, have got to take down the criminals and enforce the law. Are you with me? So who could do that? Jesus put a badge on, a badge of humanity. He came down and said, I came. And, and in fact, while he was preaching, he began to speak in the synagogues and the demon-possessed man stood up. So Jesus is preaching and he's talking and the revelation hits the man. This is the Son of God. I know who He is. In fact, He said, I know who you are. You're the Son of God. Don't cast me out before my time. He says all this stuff, but what He was really saying is, Where'd you get the body? Where'd you get the body? Good job. Give him a hand. Give the devil a hand. No, no. Just kidding. <laughs> Give Frankie a hand. Where'd you get the body? It was like He's looking. I'm going, Wait a minute. That's God in flesh. And here's Satan in flesh. A demon speaking out of the flesh going, Hey, How'd you, uh, how'd you set that up? How'd you get a body? Jesus was like, I got here legally. You're the illegal one. Hold your peace. Quiet down and exit. Evict. Banish out. You're banished out from that house. And, of course, the devil had to come out. Why? Because the authority in the power of what God came in this world. He said he came into this world to cast out the devil. He came into this world to shut down the works of the devil. He came and through death had victory over death. The one who had power over death, even the devil. We've got scripture that we've got to understand. So never underestimate the power of what Jesus Christ can do in your life. It's time, church, to understand that it is our hour to banish hell out of our lives. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Key words there are destroy him. The devil. And so the destroying of what Satan has brought into this world. Death came because of sin. And so the results of that had to be banished. Had to be reversed. Had to be cast out. That's exactly what Jesus Christ came to do. Matthew chapter 12. 
verse number 28, which we, I believe we already read that. It was that Jesus, let's look at it again. I don't know, did we read this already? Yeah, let's, yeah, we went to 12, 28, but that was, yeah, let's go Matthew 12, 28. He said, um, they, were, they called him a name. We're going to talk about the name of, of God in a minute. But they called him a name, Beelzebub. And uh, they said, you're like, you're the Lord. Of the, you're, you're a devil. You're, you're working the power of the devil. How many has been around long enough, you know, these people speaking tongues is kind of crazy. And you've been around long enough, you'll hear somebody say, that's of the devil. Well, I'm using that voice because they don't know anything about it, and they just get scared and nervous, and they say, oh, that stuff's crazy. That's of the devil. Well, listen, if the devil got into me, and ever since that moment took place, I've been doing things the way I'm doing them for the last 22 years, the devil has got to use a different tactic, amen, because I'm doing a lot more damage to the devil's kingdom now that I've got the devil than it was when I was hanging out doing all right with, you know what I'm saying? This is not what I believe. I don't believe. And so that's what Jesus was like. Listen, let me, let me repeat that logic back to you. If I'm the devil casting out the devil, that's like a house divided against itself. It can't happen. So if I'm not casting the devil out by the power of the devil, I must be using the power of God. And if that's the case, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. In fact, he said, with the finger of God, I'm casting out the devil. One time I was preaching about the finger of God, and I said, well, you just need to flick the devil off of you. I didn't mean flick the devil off. Just use your finger and just knock him off with just the finger of God. That's all you need. Amen. Uh, with the finger of God. In other words, the pointed authority coming. Sometimes when you have authority, I'm talking to you. Boom. That's power from God. If that is true, the power of God can cast the devil out. He said, if I, if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Next verse. Four. 29. Or how else can one enter into... Um, a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil his house. We have to understand what Jesus did for us so that we can repeat the process and bring glory to his name again. He that came and spoiled the house of Satan. He cast out the devil's kingdom. He displaced it. If the devil's kingdom um, is the darkness then wherever there is light, there cannot be darkness there, right? It's cast out. Darkness is cast out by a light. A better way of understanding it is if you are a solid mass, um, as we are, but like a rock, and you place a rock inside of a glass of water, what happens to the water? The water cannot penetrate the rock it must be removed from that area and the water will spill out of the cup or it's just moved. And so wherever that rock is, there is no water. Are you with me? You understand? Wherever the kingdom of God is, there is no kingdom of the devil. So wherever you possess an area, whenever you walk into an area spiritually, the banishment of hell takes place. If God shows up, the devil's got to go. Amen. You cannot have light and darkness in the same place. You cannot have two masters that you serve at the same time. You cannot have a possession of God and a possession of Satan at the same time. I don't believe that. I don't believe that you can be influenced by the devil while you're being influenced by God. You can't walk in two different directions, not too long, maybe a couple of steps, until some bad things start happening to you. You got to make a choice one way or the other amen and so I'm here to tell you right now that if I'm here then the devil's cast out amen why because I'm walking in the light I have been filled with the Holy Ghost and I bear the name of Jesus so we're going to give glory to God's name in this place I believe that sometimes stress comes from the devil I believe and know 
biblically that disease comes from the devil sometimes. I believe and know that sin is an influence and in the work of the devil. John said anyone who sins is doing the work of the devil. And that's because he, he committed sin from the beginning. But God came, hallelujah, so that he could destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And Jesus said now is the hour of judgment in this world. The prince of this world is cast out. And before that, God spoke and said, I've already glorified my name. And I'll do it again. Because God is interested in banishing hell out of your life. Clap your hands to the Lord right now. I, I, that's the, all the message I got for you today. But I believe somebody's going to get the revelation. I have the power in the name of Jesus to command and banish the works of the devil. Out. Woo. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. My wife uh, has a thing that she doesn't want me talking too nasty to the devil. So you're going to stir him up. Stop it. I, I, I understand what she means. What's the point? Let God do your fighting for you. And she's right. But I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm Sicilian. Maybe it's because I'm a guy. Maybe because I got small man syndrome. <laughs> you ever have like the small guy that, uh, uh, I'll tell you a quick funny story. Tim Whitehead, I don't know if he's watching or not, but Tim Whitehead was the biggest dude at Mount Prospect High School as a, as a junior, as a, as a freshman in, in high school. And he was huge. He's a bodybuilder. He was a flexor. He won all these trophies. He, he, was, he, was, he was like the biggest guy ever seen. His muscles had muscles. He played football. He could run fast. He'd run people over. Uh, he, he didn't want to hurt himself because he was a bodybuilder. He didn't want to get bruises on his body because that messes his trophies up. Right? So he didn't really play football real good. And we always made fun of him. We're like, dude, you are the biggest guy in the world. Just show up. And people will be like, ah, and you run over people, man. And, and he's like, I don't want to get a bruise. I don't get a bruise. Yeah, who cares about bruises? You're huge. And there was a fight that happened over at the 7-Eleven. Stupid people did stupid stuff. And, 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 and this guy, Jerry, he came up to Tim. He's like, Tim, just take your shirt off and stand there. I'll take care of the rest. Little guy shows up. Says, Tim, just stand there. I promise you nobody will touch you. You can turn and run. And just don't because he was afraid to fight. He said, just show up. Put, roll your sleeve. Do something. Show them who you are. Just stand there. And I'll do the rest. You got somebody like Tim Whitehead next to you right there. Uh, you stand right there. This dude's on my side. And you can yip, 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 I don't care how small you are. I don't care how, how non-powerful you are. My boy right here will take care of business if you touch me, right? That's the way I feel about the devil. I might not be that strong. I might not be that powerful. Man, forget Tim Whitehead. i got the God of the universe right here with me. I talk as much as I want to talk. As long as he's with me, everything's going to be all right. I'll win every time. You are banished. Out, 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 out. If God wants me to have it, then I'll have it. But if God never intended for me to have it, it must be banished from my life. You have that authority. You have that ability to banish, to displace the work of the devil out of your life. Remove the kingdom of darkness. Remove it. He, he has been occupying a long time and now it's time to take stake or, or, or to, uh, to stake the claim to take claim of the land the, the possession, the area, whatever just put your flag up and say this is mine I want you out so that I can come in what is it that needs to come in well I think in Romans um, 14 or 12 and 14 14, 12, I don't know, Romans somewhere it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. If that's what God's kingdom is, then anything that's not that must not be of God. Peace is the opposite of chaos. Confusion is not of God. I cast out confusion by the mighty name of Jesus. Righteousness, that's the opposite of wickedness and ungodliness, sinfulness, these desires, these things that are naturally in a man. I understand we have a sinful nature, but I have the authority and the power to do something about it. I want righteousness in my life, joy in my life, not depression, not discouragement, not fear, not 
ungodly things. All the junk that's coming against you is not from God. It is of the devil. And we can say, I, I don't know, it's so simple this message. But I just feel like preaching it today. That we can say, I banish you devil. Get out of my life. I'm a child of God. And we can let the kingdom of righteousness, the kingdom of God, be where it needs to be in my life. I read through my journal the other day, and I wrote something down. I thought, did I write that, or did I? Did somebody else write that? I thought, man, that was pretty, that was pretty good. And, 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 I, and I remember because I was studying the discipline of the mind, mental toughness, I call it. You got to have mental toughness if you don't sleep a lot. You lose your mind real easily, real quick. If you're under pressure and under stress, you didn't get enough sleep. Because what happens is you get irritable and you start getting cranky and everybody's wrong and you're right. You know, and, and you know that you're doing wrong and bad. You just can't control it because you're losing the peace. You're losing the mental toughness. Well, similarly, depression creeps in. Maybe not because of lack of sleep, but you just don't have the mental discipline. I wrote in my journal, I wrote, uh, discouragement is reserved for those who have no discipline of mind. Discouragement is not something God teaches his people with. It's not what the angel of the Lord comes to give you. In fact, he always comes and says, fear not, be encouraged. Lift up your heads, be encouraged. Amen. That's always a, God, he's always positive. Even with a rebuke, even with, with judgment or whatever, he's always a positive God. He's always got something. He's never a negative, you know, uh, he's never cast. He's always lift up your heads, lift up, uh, be encouraged. The Lord's spirit comes, it ought to encourage you. Even if light exposes the darkness and the, the, the things that you need cleaning up in your life, that's an encouraging thing. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've, every time I get in the presence of God, the first thing I end up doing, I know it's God. I know it's his presence because I repent. To me, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. When darkness starts to leave my life, I do it through repentance and tears. And, 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 and I'm on my face in the middle of the night. Last night, I accidentally fell asleep on my couch waiting for my wife to come home. And that was a beautiful thing. I love to accidentally fall asleep. Man, it's been 9, 9 30, 10 o'clock. Watch out. If I'm laying horizontally, it's over. And, and I just woke up at 2, and I'm like, what, what happened? Oh, man supposed to be praying and studying and so I got up and and, and I, you know I'm shaking myself and waking myself and I remember getting to a place where I just wanted to shout I wanted to pray out loud and I know everybody in the house is sleeping and so I just oh, Jesus, oh, God, oh, God. and I got down and I began to repent and I said oh God change me oh God and I recognized stuff is leaving my life right now my mind's getting better things are starting to change uh, I'm starting to shake off the cobwebs of negativity I get so carnal sometimes and, and sooner or later I gotta get it out and how do I do it I begin to plead to the Lord and repent and get it out and get it out I started to banish the darkness out of my life and light comes and I'm like oh yes everything's going to be alright God is going to take care of these situations and these things why couldn't I see it before because there was darkness around my eyes my mind was it was, it was alienated from the promises of God but I came into the place where God wanted me to be and I began to do this by casting out and banishing the darkness out of my life some of you have got to learn how to think uh, on the things of God and not the things of the devil or of the world you don't even realize because Satan comes with a tuxedo and a top hat and a cane amen he looks good he looks sharp and it's deceitful because a sharp everybody loves a sharp dressed man and, and, and he said amen and, and, and you don't think anything of a nice, clean, gentleman-looking man. And so sometimes the Bible says, well, you know, we're talking about transformed a lot. Um, transformation is what the Lord wants for us. Be ye transformed. That Greek word is metamorphosis. Metamorphe, metamorphosis. Total transformation. A, a caterpillar into a butterfly transformation, right? That's a transformation that we need to have in our body. Old things are passed away. Old things are no longer. I'm a new creature in God. That's a transformation. There's another place in the Bible that says the word transformed. You may recognize it when it talks about Satan that can be transformed into an angel of light. 
Paul warns us that be careful because Satan himself can be transformed to an angel of light. That transformation is not metamorphosis. It is ma it's a word that deals with masquerade. He pretends. He puts on a mask as if he was something else. That's not the kind of transformation. That's Halloween. That's put on a mask. That's put on some kind of deceptive looking thing. He is not an angel of light. He looks like an angel of light. So you don't even realize you're tangled up, messed up, and wrapped up in the wrong stuff. you got the wrong relationship in your life. you got the wrong kind of situation going on in your life. So many people say, Pastor, what, would, what should I do in this situation? There's been, I just told Brother Lee, I'm getting flooded with phone calls and text messages from people outside the church. They're hurting and they heard about me being a Christian, or some of them know I'm a pastor. And one guy's never set foot in this service. He's talked to me if he wants to get baptized. I've talked to him a hundred times. He calls me up. I stopped inviting him to church because he knows that I'm gonna uh, where I'm at. And 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 he called me up and he said I fell off the wagon and I need some help and all this stuff. He asked me if he thinks if I thought he should go to therapy. I said no, bro. You go to the counselor. Yeah, you go to the, the counselor. You go to you go to God in prayer. I want you to get on your knees right now. I began to talk to him and and. and uh, 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 and I, and I, was, I was helping him and I began to realize that God is not interested in the things that you've he's deceiving the devil is deceiving people and God isn't interested in condemning you out of that he wants to open your eyes so that you can see and you can cast the stuff off and he asks me what would Jesus do in this situation I said bro Jesus wouldn't be in your situation you're deceived. He's never been in that situation. You need to get out of that situation. Amen? And then find out what Jesus would do. And so I, I, I'm telling somebody here to understand this, that I'm not giving the power of the devil is not great, but the power of the devil is deception. And the, the end times, man, many will be deceived. By who? By the deceiver. He is a deceiver and he has deceived you into thinking you're doing right. And all of a sudden, you're in this situation, in this circumstance, and you can almost hear the laughing and mocking of the devil around you and the, the hiss of the serpent and all the poison that has settled in. Well, today, I just want to proclaim that the name of Jesus has power enough to displace, to cast out, and to banish hell and all of the things that come with it. I out of your life. Praise God. Jesus preached in the temple, and in Mark chapter or in Luke chapter 4, verse 32, they heard him preaching, and when he was done preaching, they marveled. Uh, they, they, uh, they were so astonished at his preaching, his doctrine, because the word uh, that he preached had power. Amen. And this is what uh, me and Frankie uh, demonstrated a minute ago. In the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone! We, we, what do we have to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Uh, are you come to destroy us? If I was there... If you bring me back in time and I was there in the room, I'd say, yep, destroy. First John 1, chapter 3, verse 8, he's come to destroy you. <laughs> You're done for. And Jesus didn't want to have a conversation with him. He said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And in other words, he was saying, where'd you get the body? How did you get into a man? Have you come to destroy us? Another, another gospel says you come to cast us into the abyss before our time. And Jesus said, just be quiet. I'm not giving you any answers to your questions. Come out and be displaced, be removed, and be banished. The Bible says that the devil threw him down, but he didn't get hurt, and he came out of the man. I'm here to tell somebody we can still cast devils out of our lives by the name and power of Jesus Christ. He's illegally occupying your life. Amen. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 6 and 7, Anthony, before you put the PowerPoint up. I was going through some notes, and um, sometimes we feel like we're imprisoned by our situation, imprisoned by our circumstance, imprisoned by, by uh, a lack of oil coming through our glands and our eyes, imprisoned by diabetic problems, imprisoned by whatever. I even know that some of you think this way. 
God made me this way. I'm an old person. I'll never change. Is that not what people think, Brother Terry? Some things will never change. But some things can change. Because he, cha- he might not change, but he can change you. He can change your nature. He can change your desires. He can change, surely he can change your financial situation, your circumstances, the people you hang with, and all the rest of that. But he can change you. He's that kind of God. He is that kind of God. I wish I had a witness in the house that said, you know what? I once was, but now I'm not because the devil got cast out of my life. Some time ago, I was an angry, bitter, depressed, alcoholic, uh, drug dealing, smoking pot dude uh, that just wanted a next girlfriend or whatever. But something happened a little bit after that that changed me. And I have never been going back to that guy ever again because I have been removed from the kingdom of darkness. Amen. I wonder if somebody in this house can remember the banishment of hell out of your life. still in the banishing business. Amen. He's still in the light uh, uh, displacing darkness business. Amen. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 42, he says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and I will hold your hand. This is for somebody here. And I will keep you and I will give for you, uh, give you for a covenant of the people for a light uh, unto the Gentiles. Verse 7 to open the blind eyes, uh, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, uh, and to him that sits in darkness, uh, I'm going to bring him out of the prison house. Come on, the Lord wants to bring a jailbreak here today. Amen. The Lord wants to get you out and cast you from the darkness uh, into uh, the kingdom uh, of light, into freedom, into light, health, uh, prayer. Oh, yes, a lot of other scriptures. Maybe we'll go through them. But let me get this PowerPoint up. A while back ago, I, I, I would always get disturbed when people would speak Hebrew to me. Like it was some spiritual thing. You know, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I don't know, Shamahuya in my life. And I get the Shamashia Shaha. And then I think that, you know, Yeshua this. And I'm like, man, wait a minute. Do I have to speak Hebrew to go to heaven or something? Is that, is that what you're trying to tell me? Because why don't you just call him Jesus? We all speak English. Yeshua is a Hebrew word for Jesus. That's his name. Well, it's just more spiritual to me to speak Hebrew. You should learn Hebrew. You know, he's like, I want to get the shalom in my house. And when you get the shalom in your house, what, you know, what in the world are you talking about? I want, and he'd do like this, like some kind of, you know, Hebrew is the way God speaks to me. And I thought, well, I don't speak Hebrew. So I wanted to learn something, right? And I do know the Shema. Shema Israel. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Achad. Amen. That means the Lord. The Lord, he is a uh, hero Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord, he is one. Amen. Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Bible quizzers. And so I know that, but I didn't know much anything else. So I wanted to learn. And where do I start? I started with the name. And I stopped there because there's so much stuff there, man. And I realized uh, I've gotten where God wants me to be, amen. I still call him Jesus, but there was something about the name that God uh, started with in, in, in the Old Testament. It's called uh, the Tetragrammaton. It's the four symbols uh, of God's name. We say Yahweh or we say Jehovah. In ancient times, they said probably something different. And we don't really know because it was only spoken in the temple. They used a different name outside of the temple. It was too sacred. And after the destruction of the temple, the priests and the passing down of the way it was pronounced was not allowed to be spoken. So no one really knows the proper pronunciation. That's why we can say Yahweh or we can say Jehovah. And we don't really know the letters. We know there's no vowels. It's just Y-H-V-H or J-H-W-H or whatever. Something like, or, or, or you know, I missed that, mixed that up, I think. But Yahweh or Jehovah. But the Hebrew word... This tetragrammaton, it comes from four symbols. I'm going to talk to you about it very quickly, and then and we'll pray. Because there's something powerful about the name, amen, and, and, and the significance of it. And so, um, next slide. So here we have, uh, now Hebrew reads from right to left. Are you okay with this? I know you like to shout and, 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 and dance and stuff. Let me teach you something very quickly, okay? 
I won't yell it, so this will be a teaching. Amen. If I start yelling, I'll move into preaching, right? That's how it goes. Okay. So Hebrew reads from right to left. And so when we look at this, we have to look at it differently. I'm not sure why we messed that up and we reversed it when languages came into the world, why we went left to right. I suppose we're always trying to find ways to be different than God. Uh, uh, but in studying Hebrew, you first got to go against the grain and you got to kind of go countercultural. And it's difficult at first because you naturally want to read left to right. But start over at the right side and, 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 and move over. So you start with the last or the first, whatever, the one that's circled on the next slide. And it's called the Yad. Yad is the smallest letter in the Hebrew language. Literally means hand. And it's the symbol of the Jew. It also means monument or share. It also is the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Yad contains a meaning as much as the rest of the Hebrew alphabet combined. This symbol, this Yad, it signifies creation to the Jews. It's all of the metaphysical processes of creation. And in its own, it stands as an important symbol of what the Jewish people will say, the creator, the Yad. In every other uh, letter, in every other symbol in the Hebrew language, it has the Yad in it. Amen. It, every letter and every symbol in the Hebrew language has a numerical value. Okay. This is a very quick, short lesson on the Hebrew language. But everything has a numerical value, and every little letter and every punctuation, it has to be done just right. It all has meaning and significance. And so if you make the letter H in hypocrite, if you write the word hypocrite, we're in the digital age. Capital letters mean something different than lowercase letters in an email. It's like you're yelling or you're emphasizing or something. Well, if you say hypocrite um, with a big H, you're saying he's a big old fat hypocrite, you know. But if you put a little H there, it's like, well, he doesn't realize it, but he's being hypocritical. There's a difference in the way punctuation uh, uh, matters and stuff. And so it's, that's kind of my way of under, helping us understand the Hebrew language. Hebrew Yad, this little symbol, is in every other letter in some place and its numerical value is 10 there's something about the number 10 I started thinking about it 10 plagues 10 commandments there are 10 generations from Adam to Noah and 10 generations from Noah to Abraham Jesus loved to use the number 10 in his parables there were 10 virgins uh, there were 10 lepers the 10 talents that the man that doubled the five and all there's all these things that in fact I've, I've come to find out that Jesus actually said I am Ten times in John's gospel. And so this was the most frequently used letter um, in the Hebrew alphabet. This letter Yad, we'll call it. And it's mostly used all throughout uh, all the other symbols and everything. So this is a symbol of creation. It is a symbol, but it's small, it's tiny. So it's, it's a humble symbol of the creation. In other words, our creator who's involved in every other part of the world and every aspect of life is humble. And this is the beginning of the Tetragrammaton. The Yod symbolizes the fact that God is meek, that he's hidden in nature, but he's a part of all existence. This is not something I'm making up. This is what the Jews believe. This is what they say. This symbol Yad means the meek and all existent creator and it 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 meta, metaphysical meta, 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 uh, uh, humanitizes uh, it into hands I don't think I use it I can't remember the word but something where you take a, a nature of God and put it into human form this symbol is hands as if he created with his hands so here we have the very beginning what is it anthro yeah, humanizes. So here we have the very first thing in God's name. You're taking notes. That's great. Yod is the meek and all-existent creator who has hands. You with me? That's the first part. Second part. It gets better. This is the word hey, H-E-H, -E hey, the symbol of divine grace and promise. Adding the letter hey um, to names in Scripture is what the Lord did with Abram. He added hey to it and became Abraham. So now promise showed up in Abram's life and now he's Abraham. Divine grace shows up in Abram's life and now he is Abraham. The numerical value is five. And so different places um, where 
this word exists or this symbol exists in, the, in, in words like window, opening, desire, um, the, the signing of, 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 um, of breathing. There's a lot of different things, but it really means to exist or to be revealed. And to exist and to be revealed is what God was doing uh, when he spoke his name through the burning bush. This is where God said to, Abra- uh, to Moses, he said, tell them I am sent you. Are you with me? This is the I am. And so here it is. The second symbol just means, let's just say, to exist, to be revealed, to become. All right? That's what this means. Okay, next one. And here's the word vav. This symbol is a symbol of achievement, perseverance, transformation. But it also, I've come to find out, it also means nail or peg. It also means that this numeric value, it also has a numeric value of six. And so it is as if to say that man has put a nail in my name. And so six is the number of man. God's perfect number is seven, but because of mortal man always falls short, the best man can ever do is six. It's renowned uh, uh, men uh, uh, who have stood out in defiance of God like Goliath, Nebuchadnezzar, the Antichrist. These guys are all emphatically marked by the number six. Goliath's height was six cubits and a span of six inches. And so he was nine foot six. The giant had six toes, six fingers on each hand and each foot, his brother. Nebuchadnezzar's image of idolatry had a breadth of six cubits. The six is a big deal. Uh, uh, the, The man's number in the Antichrist is three sixes. And so this value here is saying something about sort of the evil man has used nails. This is all in the name of God. And the next one is hey again. And so it's again, it's to be revealed or to become. And so I began to study this out. And it's almost as if God was trying to say that he is the creator that is to be revealed and will be nailed in his hands and then will be revealed again. The creator who is to be nailed in his hands who reveals himself twice. This is the name Jehovah. This is what it means. The all-existent creator who is to have his hands nailed or something like that and reveals himself twice. Amen. And so there are different places in Scripture. Now let me preach to you about the name of God. There are differences in Scripture, different places in Scripture where this name, Yahweh, I'll say Jehovah, is given an extension. So the creator who exists and reveals himself twice and his, there's something about a man and nails in his hands, uh, this whole God that has revealed himself, uh, something about him that I want to ascribe a nature or an attribute to and so on the Mount Moriah where Abraham was he said uh, not only is he Jehovah but he is Jehovah Jireh he will provide in Exodus 15 26 he became Jehovah Rafi the Lord that heals in Exodus 17 8 through 15 he became Jehovah Nisi he's the Lord our banner Jehovah banner of victory in Judges 6 24 he became Jehovah Shalom in other words the Jehovah Jehovah of peace, the Lord our peace. Uh, Psalm 23 and 1, David began to say, the Lord is our shepherd. He's Jehovah Raha. And and, and in Jehovah Titkanu and Jeremiah 23, 6, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Shama, a lot of different places. The Lord is present. The Lord is this. The Lord is that. In Isaiah 12 and 2, it says, the Lord has become my salvation. Jehovah Yeshua. Or Yahashua, which is where sometimes Joshua is mistakenly translated for Jesus because the name is the the Lord has become my salvation, my Savior. And when Israel backslid, they began to replace the name Jehovah or uh, 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 Yahweh or whatever you want to call it. Uh, They began to replace the name with Baal and they began to use Baal in their children's name and like Jerubabel or Ishbael or Meribael and in times of revival when they came back to the Lord Jehovah they repented and instead of Baal they displaced Baal and they replaced it not with Jehovah but with uh, Bosheth 
Bohesh or, or Bosheth, I think. Bosheth is how you say it, which means shame in the Hebrew language. And so I studied the names, and, and sure enough, Jerubasheth and Ishbosheth and Mephibosheth and all these names. Uh, now they said, We don't want Baal. We're ashamed of ourselves. Uh, they didn't quite displace the darkness out of their lives, they didn't quite cast out Baal out of their lives uh, because uh, Baal was still a very big part uh, of different areas of Israel and, and Judah. Uh, in fact, areas were named after Baal Tamar, the Lord of the Palm Tree, Baal Bereth, the Lord of the Covenant, uh, Baal Gad, Baal Peor, Baal Meon, all these little areas where Baal was, Baal. And so when they came to Jesus, they said, You are Baal Zebub, the Lord of the Flies, the Lord of the Dung. You're the poo poo God. How blasphemous! And the Lord who is now Jehovah Salvation, He's walking in a new extension of what the name Jehovah is. He's walking and He says, I come in my Father's name. I come in the name that my Father has. But it's an extension that encompasses all the other extensions together. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am the provider. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the shepherd. I am. And he's beginning to say, I am the bread. I'm the provider. I am this. I am that. But my name is my Father's name that I have come in. And he said, in my name, in this name, you shall cast out devils you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover you can use the tetragrammaton extended name of Jesus to do the work that Jesus came to do in his name you can cast out and displace darkness you can command a provision you can command health and healing as somebody understanding me we have the power and the understanding that there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's a lot of stuff right there. It might have gone over some of your heads. It might have been boring for some of you. That's all right. Just know this. There's something about the name Jesus. There's something about the name Jesus. My father-in-law travels all over the world. Are you with me? You ready? My father-in-law travels all over the world and he tells me it works in every language. Yeah. It works in every language. In, in Spanish, it's Jesus. In Italian, it's Jesus. In French, it's Jesus. Oh. Anybody else speak another language? Anybody? Jesus, man. In Jamaican. Jesus. Amen. What is it in, uh, in, in the language you speak, Kaliwe? Esa? With an L? Lesa. 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 The devils over there know that the name of Lesa means business. Amen. In German, what is it? What is it? Jesse. Danke, Jesse. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't matter what language. You can say Yeshua if you want to. You can say Jesus. You can say it in any other language. But there's something about the revelation of that name. This is the God who exists in every aspect of life. Who revealed himself twice. Who's going to reveal himself twice into this world. And has something about nails that has purchased and done the work. That displaces the darkness out of our lives. It's in his name church. In his name is the power to destroy the work of the devil. That's what those nails did. Amen. The nails purchased our salvation, but it also destroyed the work of the devil. So why wouldn't he put it in his name? If there's power somewhere, and we say the power's in the cross and the power's in the blood, that's true. But on the day of Pentecost, Peter with the revelation, hey, we don't need the blood of bulls and of goats anymore. We don't need the sacrifices of animals anymore. The death of Jesus tore the veil and shook the earth. The blood that was spilled on Calvary, he was called the Lamb of God. That animal sacrifice stuff has been fulfilled in one sacrifice, once and for all, so the blood has the 
the power to wash sins away and the blood has the power to heal the sicknesses of our bodies uh, but Peter understood that it was the name of Jesus uh, that the blood did all that but now it's in the name of Jesus so in the name of Jesus you can repent and be baptized and be filled with the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus we have salvation furthermore John cha- or John preached uh, chapter 3 that in the name of Jesus rise up and walk Something about the name. Do you realize, and it's not a magic formula that you say like hocus pocus, al kabam, shazam. Because in the Bible it says you're trying to conjure me up. You can't conjure me up. I don't come out of a bottle. I don't just snap my fingers and Jesus, there he is. That's not how it works. But if you have a gun and a taser and a badge... You can use the authority. If I say stop in the name of the law and you don't stop, there's some authority that I have. I'll cuff you. Somebody taught me jiu-jitsu and I'm going to take my, take my authority on you. Amen. Because I have the authority to exercise in the name of Jesus. I actually have the authority to displace the devil, to cast out darkness, to command and banish hell out don't be afraid don't be afraid we have the power in the name of Jesus we have been given this is why this church emphasizes so strongly the name must be invoked over you in baptism don't miss that don't miss it it's all right if you've been baptized father son holy ghost and that's all right, but let me just tell you there's something powerful about the name and there's something about baptism that allows you access to that name because the Lord wants us to be the children of His name and we got to get the family name going and we got to understand the power that's in that name. Everywhere Jesus walked when He started to speak, devils came up and those devils were in church, sister. They were in church, man. Are there any devils in church here today? Well, if you're here today, devil, let me tell you this. I stand in the place of the God of heaven. In Jesus' name, you are banished. Get your hands off of the people of God that want to live for Him and want to serve Him. Take disease off. Get out of here with all your sickness and all your depression and all your disease and all your darkness and let the light. God said we will be enlightened, delivered, freed from prison. I claim that promise here today. I claim the light of the Gentiles to be in this house. I claim the deliverer of prisons. Hallelujah. I claim the healing. We displace the devil. We come to this city. We came to Displains. And they received us not. But as many as received us. We came to Glenview. Running out of Displains. One thing that we have not quite done yet that we're doing now is we're going to bind the strong man. And not just in the city, but in our own selves. We've got to realize and recognize the power that we really have a hold of. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall flat on our faces. And we're going to get up. But we're going to go forward. We're going to win. You've got to get rid of the darkness and the depression and the disgusting things that Satan has commanded and put into your life that is not of God that is not of God you look at you look at that situation and you just say I have got the power of the name of Jesus I believe in the name of Jesus I believe that his name and his blood is for me I believe that the light and the glory of that name shall be lifted up and brought into my life again he's glorified it before but he'll glorify it again the purpose of the glorification of the name of Jesus was so that the works of the devil would be cast out so that judgment would come to the darkness and the hour has come it came then and it's going to happen again that the darkness and the hour of darkness would be banished would be cast out that that is why believers can do the things that Jesus did he said you think this is something greater things than these uh, shall you do uh, if I go to the Father if I go and I 
do the blood thing and I do the death thing and I raise up from the dead and I pour out my spirit on you when I do that you're going to be just like me in fact you're going to do greater things uh, than I do and he said you're going to do it uh, in my name put Mark 16 and 6 up on the board let's stand together watch we're going to banish hell it's going to be like this 16 and 16 I'm sorry Jesus is speaking the last words recorded in the gospel of Mark he that believes and is baptized shall be saved he that believes not shall be damned next verse and these signs shall follow the licensed preachers these signs shall follow those who can really sing and preach you know that singing and preaching doesn't bring revival doesn't matter how good the preaching is doesn't matter how good. some churches have great preaching and great music and they're small we got good music here we got Ben Nolan preaching here believers there's something when the word is mixed with faith there's something when we begin to lift up in faith what we're hearing we start believing we have power over sickness we start believing we can have deliverance from sin you mean I can have freedom from my addictions freedom from my sicknesses freedom from this plague freedom from all this stuff it's all wrapped up in his name he said he'd give us the freedom he said he'd give us deliverance here he says if you believe you shall the very first thing you got to do if you're going to have other stuff if you're going to have anything else in your life the very first thing you're going to do is you got to cast out devil why is this got to be you've all seen too many crazy movies this does not have to be foaming at the mouth throwing up spitting in a garbage can rolling around on the floor and flopping around until something thrashes and throws on you see a puff of purple smoke come out and then the person goes what just happened that's not how you cast out devils all the time they shall speak with new tongues and that's not of the devil the scripture I didn't make it up that was written 2,000 years before I was born next verse it shall take up serpents let me just add that means accidentally and if because it says if they drink any deadly thing also accidentally it shall not harm them in other words the power of the name of Jesus has power over death itself over the poisonous snakes out there that try to poison you it has power over anything that tries to get in you and kill you it will not prevail the name is more powerful it shall not harm you in fact if you're sick then those that have the name and faith in that name as, as John already preached the sick can recover in the name of Jesus what are we doing? we're casting out the devil we're evicting darkness we're displacing Satan's kingdom and replacing it with God's kingdom how many believe in heaven? Do you believe there's a heaven? The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, you believe that? How many believes there'll be sickness there? No sickness there? How many believes there'll be some sin there, maybe a little bit? A little bit of sin? So there's no sickness, there's no sin in heaven? How many believes that will die eventually after a while of heaven? Yeah, not in heaven, yeah, pay attention. <laughs> We're still in heaven. No death, no sickness, no sin. And furthermore, no tears. There's something else that's in heaven that we got under that's not in heaven that we have to remember. There's no darkness there. Right. Ever. Yeah. It's never nighttime ever again. Amen. It's not the sun either. It's the light of Jesus. Yeah. So if we're going to oh man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Revelation is coming to somebody. If we're going to have heaven in our life, that means sickness, sin, death even, and darkness cannot be there. You can't have both. I want heaven. I want heaven in my life uh, here on earth. Uh, whatever portion of it I can have. I might not be able to have all of it. But whatever portion I can have here on earth, if the Lord has given it to me, then I banish everything else out of my life. I don't want disease. I don't want sickness. I don't want stress. I don't want anything that came from the darkness. Uh, Jesus said, they that sit in darkness shall see a great light. Uh, if I can have light, I command light. If I can have healing, I command healing. If I can have disease removed, then I want that. If I can be free, then I want that 
And I do it in the name, in the God-given name of Jesus. Oh, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Lay your hands on somebody next to you right now. And begin to believe what you're hearing and practice what you're hearing right now and start displacing darkness out of your brother's life. Start commanding and exiling Satan's kingdom out of your sister's life. Start proclaiming light. Start proclaiming heaven. Jesus said when you pray, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come. Not the kingdom of darkness, but let the kingdom of heaven come. Hallelujah. Let your will be done in this earthen vessel just like it is in heaven. So if there's no sickness in heaven, then let there be no sickness in this earthen vessel. If there's no darkness in heaven, then let there be no darkness in this earthen vessel. If there's no disease in heaven, then let there be no disease in this earthen vessel. I release miracles, signs, wonders, powerful things in the name of Jesus so that you can be glorified again, Lord. Come on, church, really believe it. you got to really exercise it. Don't worry about the results. Let the results come. Just believe. Just begin to cast out and to proclaim. State ground. I believe God is my provider. I believe God is my shepherd. I believe God is my peace. I believe God is my healer. So we're going to move Baal out. We're going to move uh, uh, Bosheth out. We're going to move uh, all these other things out. And, and by extension, we're going to bring in the name of Jesus. morning I said Lord what are we doing in church today displace the kingdom of hell displace it just remove it whenever I think of removing the devil I, I always go to the name but tradition is the biggest enemy of apostolic power routine stuff I am a big fan of, of habit stacking I am a big fan of it I got a chaotic spaghetti brain that will go in all kinds of directions but habits in fact Aristotle said greatness is not an event it's a, it's a habit so it's not something that great things that you do one time it's a habitual lifestyle I'm all about routine man if I could get a habit in my life that's good let's do it let's get in the habit of doing stuff but don't let tradition stop you from the intervention of the Holy Ghost right now this could be your day this could be the moment you want to stay with that monkey on your back that demonic oppression on your back after a service like this that's on you but there's enough power in the name of Jesus and faith in that name is here 
I don't care, Brother Jenkins, what the doctors proclaimed over somebody. That name that God has said is on you, that's the name I want to proclaim. And if that name has healing, he already took the nails. He had that already planned out when he was talking to Moses. He already decided to pay the price for my healing. He already decided to pay the price for my righteousness. He already decided to pay the price for the peace and the joy in my life. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to do something for it. So I, I think that I would like for faith to be made whole here. Faith to rise up here and, and to go against tradition. They used to do a healing line. You remember those? You've been around Pentecost when you were a little boy. Maybe they had them when you were around as a kid. Everybody lined up and the pastors would come around. It's almost like a, you go, good game, good game, good game, good game. And one of them's got the anointing and you stop there for a minute. And, and you know, healing line. You remember those? Anybody, anybody remember? That's a tradition, but some, some traditions are good, man. We're going to go back to it. I don't think the apostles said, Peter, you stand here. James, I'll stand here. And everybody with sickness passed through. But you know what they did? The shadow of Peter. You talk about a healing line. That's powerful stuff, man. Peter just embodied the name of Jesus and the power that's in the power of the name of Jesus that's there in him. And he just said, it's a sunny day. I don't even need to touch you with my body. Now, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus had to actually have somebody touch his, his clothes at least. Peter's shadow. And there's so much faith that rose up in the early church. I'm not preaching a different message right now because if we can have faith in the name of Jesus and the power that's in God, things like that could happen here. You want to talk about revival? You want to talk about curious people that want to know what's going on? I heard Lazarus died four days ago. Why is he in the living room eating breakfast? Who's this Jesus? I want to know what kind of power is going on in this church. I want to know what kind of power you got going on. This man was in the hospital the other day. This man's got problems. Problems where he can't wear, he's got to wear sunglasses in the daytime uh, and, and even at nighttime. There's things that I want changed physically, spiritually, supernatural things that I want to have happen. I can't do it from screaming. It's got to be God getting the glory. I want to give God a chance today, don't you? Is anybody, and I'm not saying you're evil and all oh, the devil is in your life because you're a sinner. So if I say if you, got, you want to displace the devil out of your life, come forward. That doesn't mean you're confessing to have sin. The thing about God, He doesn't heal old age. Your eyes are going bad, your memory's going, whatever. Sometimes He doesn't heal old age. You can't pray for gray hair to turn black. But I'm not talking about those kind of healings. I'm talking about healings from diabetes. I'm talking about healings where the oil in your eye where the doctor says it's never going to come back it's going to come back I'm talking about things that causes you to have high blood pressure that, that causes you to visit the hospital frequently things that cause you now that's physical what about the torment that's going on in your mind what about the fear you have of dying lost because of this, this, of this problem of sin in your life this habit that you've got that you can't break this secret sin that nobody knows but God what about breaking those chains what about the depression that you struggle with what about the low self esteem that you can't shake and everything is coming against you and God says you're my child and you say I don't really deserve it and you repel God because of how low your self esteem is that's not the will of God either that's the devil having his way in your mind I want all of that out of this church. I want all of that out of this church. God has called this knucklehead, uh, pasta-eating, pot, ex-pot-smoking Sicilian boy to be a pastor in this church. And he told me this morning, displace the devil's kingdom. Well, I don't know how to do that. Pastor Jan's taught me if you want to get the darkness out, turn on the light. So I'm going to turn on the light. Shout the name of Jesus from the housetops. But if anybody wants the devil out of their life, pay attention. If you want the devil out of your life, quickly walk up to this place right here, right up here. Not because there's something special about here, but just because we can identify who you are. If you want the devil's stuff, all the stuff I'm preaching about. Now, you, we know you're not evil and you're not sinful. But there's darkness that has gripped you. Honestly, that's everybody here. But somebody that wants really deliverance. Yeah. 
man, I know some of you got guilt. Some of you got shame. Some of you got people people saying things about you. Some of you got disease and sickness. Some of you got pain in your body and your life. Financial problems. God's will is not being fulfilled because of darkness that's coming on you. I get it. We don't, we're out of people to pray for you. We're going to we're gonna have to all pray. I, I, I unfortunately, my gifting is to be silly. God has not gifted me to, to, to breathe on people and knock them out and have them be healed. But I know that he can do it through a vessel like me. My last name is Locasho. In Sicilian, casho is cheese. Like in Spanish, queso. Queso. Lo queso. I'm the cheese. All you end up, if I lay my hands in my name, you're going to end up moldy and stinky. I won't do that to you. It's not my name that's going to be glorified. We're going to glorify the name of Jesus. Where we know that there's healing and there's victory and there's power and there's salvation. And there's light and there's deliverance. The only reason that I'm going to pray for you is because he said you shall lay your hands on them. So God right now has no hands on right here that to lay on but mine and yours. That's it. In faith. I didn't write the book, but I preach it and I believe it. And so I'm going to do what the book says. Simple. This is simple. I'm trying to break it down simple so you don't writhe around on the ground until foam comes out of your mouth to cast the devil out of your life. We're just going to speak it. We're just going to say there's a name that is stronger than whatever darkness is coming against you. And if my, in, the, in that name I lay my hands on you until God r- brings whatever light and joy and victory that you need in your life. And that's it. Then we rejoice. And then we have whatever it can possibly. Then you start to act and pray as if God has done it. That would be a celebration. That would be like you just go to your phone and open up your Bank of America app and go, Whoa, I got more money in there than I thought. Must have worked. The prayer must have worked. Somehow. We prayed for Wallace before. We've anointed Wallace. I believe God bring raises and, and, and blessings financially. I believe that, sure. But some people need some bigger, de- bigger demons to cast out. That's a big one for some of us. I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just trying to break it down, make it simple. I'd love to see your eyes get healed in this service. It's possible. We both believe that it's possible. I'd love to see it. That way we can give glory to God. Now, I'm not going to first lay hands on anybody so that we can just believe together. Why don't you lay hands on yourself? You can lay hands on your own head, in your own life. Or wherever the pain is, you want to touch it, that's fine. Whatever it is, you lay your own hands on. I know that it's supposed to be others possibly, but there's too many of us. And then when the Lord moves on you, you lay hands on somebody else. But I want you to say the words with me. Not the magic words, but I just want to get our mindset right. uh, That we will banish hell. I banish you out of my life in the name of Jesus. I want you to use those words. Satan, I banish you out of my life. I banish you out of my body. I banish you out of my mind. I banish you out of my family. I banish you out of my home. I don't want to feel fear, darkness, or the effects of Satan in my life ever again anymore. I have the power and the authority in the name of Jesus, so I banish you out by the authority of the name of Jesus. And by the anointing that's in the Holy Ghost and power of the Word of God. I command healing in the name of Jesus. I proclaim light in the minds that are dealing with darkness. They that struggle with depression, discouragement and fear and doubt and worry. I replace it now with joy and with peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Give them boldness to do the things of righteousness, I pray to cast out the works 
of the devil, the effects of sin, the effects of disease be removed in Jesus' name. The effects of financial devourers be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.